Here at Notre Dame, we strive to live two worlds as best we can, to be a university, a place of research and intellect and study, but to be a Catholic university, one that does so from the heart of the church, seeking to do God's will and to share his love in all things. And bringing these two things together at times is not easy, and at times leads to some entertaining intersections. One of them is this. We have managed to find the two most hierarchical institutions one can possibly imagine and bring them together. The church's hierarchy, that's well known and well established. But for the academy, it really does dwell in everything. For our students, it's being measured upon your grades and GPA, whether you make the dean's list or not, which set of Latin honors you're going to graduate with. For our faculty, it's whether you're a research faculty or teaching faculty, whether you're an assistant professor or an associate professor, which are different things, or full professor. For our staff, it's how many folks are in your chain of command, what level of manager or supervisor you are. In a lot of ways, our entire world here is ranked quite quantitatively. And that's not always bad. It causes in us a desire to want to excel, a desire to want to do well, a desire to use our gifts and our talents as best we can. That's fair. But my fear is, my fear is that in this hyper quantitative world, we fall into the same trap that James and John fall into in today's gospel that our worth, our value, our meaning as human beings is dependent on what our GPA is, or which set of Latin honors we graduate with, or what rank we hold as a professor. That somehow the higher we go, the more important we must be, the more valuable we must be, the more essential to the life of the world we must be. Our Lord today in the gospel reminds us and pushes back against this notion, not because he doesn't want us to do well, not because he doesn't want us to excel, not because he doesn't want us to use our gifts and our talents to the best of our ability, but because he helps, he seeks to help us orient all of those things in the right direction. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The letter to the Hebrews reminds us this morning that Christ has come into our world, has abandoned his divine status to a certain extent so that he might give us life and give it in the full. That our worth, our value, our dignity, those things are not of our own creation. They're not of our own manifestation. They are first and foremost gifts from God. We don't merit them, we don't earn them, we don't work hard for them. They are free gift from the God who loves us and created us and redeemed us by his death and resurrection on the cross. Our worth and dignity as human beings is not dependent on our output or our rank or our status, but gifted to us by God and is inherent to who we are, no matter how much money we make, how much square footage our house has, what rank or title we hold in society or in our job. And that very fundamental truth, and our confidence in that very fundamental truth, allows us this day to share and be inspired by Christ's example. That fulfillment for us, 
true peace, true joy comes not with being as high-ranking as possible, but comes in sharing in the life and mission of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who did not come to be served, but to serve. Our happiness our fulfillment as human beings won't be satiated by rank or title or income. It can only be satiated by love. It can only be satiated by Christ. And so this morning, the Lord challenges us to think about and ask ourselves how we satiate that desire for him, that desire for meaning, that desire for longing, that desire for fulfillment, not in the stuff of this world, but in offering our life in love and service to God and to neighbor. That's going to look differently for all of us, depending on where we are. It will look differently for our students and faculty and staff. It will look differently for any number of us. But the inherent core of that mission will always be the same. To ask ourselves how the Lord might be inviting us to use the gifts and talents he's given us, the very gift of our life, to follow his example to love and to serve those around us. Sometimes those callings and invitations are large and significant. Sometimes they're monetary and financial. Sometimes they require great acts of sacrifice on our behalf. But oftentimes they're not. Oftentimes they're small and minor. Oftentimes they require simply little inconveniences during our life the patience to listen for a few extra minutes to that friend who's a little bit annoying on the phone today, the willingness to see the presence of God in someone that we walk past eight times a week, the willingness to place ourselves in someone else's shoes and ask ourselves what they might be experiencing. And it's easy for us to judge or to condemn or to vilify. ask ourselves how we are seeing the presence of Christ in another when so often we simply want to see how everyone, what everyone can do for us. These are no easy tasks and it's no easy call. And so we gather on these holy days, these Sundays, to be nourished by the example and life of Christ who offers his love for us first, who gives himself to us really and truly in the Eucharist, body and blood, soul and divinity, so that he might nourish us and give us life and courage to follow his example. Here, the Lord gives himself totally and fully to us. And in our reception of that gift, we open our hearts and ask the Lord to help us to do the same. And so as you gather to receive the Lord's body and blood this day, we simply open our minds and our hearts to see the ways he's inviting us in this life to serve, to imitate him in love and charity, and so to share not only in his sacrifice, but also in his glory and his triumph.